Yep, it's a very good day for some bike maintenance. Hello world, hello USA, hello Philippines and Indonesia, India, Africa, wherever I have so many subscribers, it's so nice to have you here today. Dropper post. Buy a dropper post, whether it's used or new, whether it's external or internal routing, do it. I'm not selling anything, I'm just selling you, kind of, safety, speed and you will, you will just learn technique so much faster with the dropper post. So I'm putting dropper post on all of my bikes. My bikes are old school, 27.5 inch wheels for cross country is old school, uh, medium size, insert. You have to make sure that the dropper post is not too long and it will actually fit your seat post. So not only the minimal inserts that all the manuals will tell you about, but also how far the dropper post has to go inside your seat tube uh, so that you have the right height of your saddle. Some seat tube, because uh, they, they are not straight, can be problematic. The second thing is cable routing. Most of the dropper posts now will be internal ones. You need to find a place where you're gonna uh, route your cable. As you can see, this port is for one cable only. I need to replace it with a double port. I couldn't find it. Actually, for my last bike, I was drilling a hole in, in this one, but I borrowed it for my another bike. Because I, these bikes, you can see, I have two of them. I bought them. One is a uh, new one is used, although both are six or seven years old. So I just borrowed the internal, internal cable uh, port. Uh, here I'm opening the second one. And the more fancy internal cable routing you have, the more problematic it can be. Sometimes you need to remove bottom bracket bearings as well. The next thing is to figure out how long your housing is going to be. And now I'm routing the housing through the frame. This part is very helpful to do that. I would really, I would really want to have external cables. It would be so much easier. But still, this is like in between in terms of uh, cable routings. It's not the newest one, so I don't have to remove the bottom bracket or, oh my gosh, the uh, the headset bearings. So it fits here. This part helps me actually to bend my, uh, my housing and put it through the seat tube. Just make sure you don't break your housing. You don't, you don't bend it too much. As you can see now, I'm uh, already uh, guiding the cable through the, through the housing. Now I'm putting the end of the cable into my uh, dropper post. The, the open end of the cable uh, is on the handlebar side on this dropper post and the cable end is on the seat post side. It can be different on different dropper posts. This system is easier to, um, to deal with in my opinion. So now I'm checking out see uh, how my handlebars uh, will work. Yes, the other housings are too long. It's, it's all now um, being um, adjusted now and cut. I need to bleed also my suspension. Okay, this fits. Make sure that when you cut this housing, the cable is not inside. So you need to pull it back. Um, now I'm just setting it as it should be. The cable goes back. Why did I put the cable first? Because I wanted to pull my dropper post down, making sure it's it was connected to the housing when, when I was measuring the, the length. Now I'm pulling on the cable and housing simultaneously and pushing uh, the dropper post just a little bit, uh, then measuring uh, my seat post, uh, seat post height. Make sure that this dropper seat post is fully in the fully extended position. Mine wasn't. It was out of the box and it was like two centimeters down. Uh, so I needed to change the height of it later and probably I'm, I'm gonna need to, to cut the housing once again. You can see now that the cable here is open, so the, the cable end is on the dropper post. Uh, there is no screws there and I'm just checking whether it's, it yeah. works. Yes, it does. Lovely. This dropper post, my friend, is first, di the right diameter, second, the right length. So it's actually, it, it fits my seat post on the frame and third, it's got a lot of travel. This is 
170 millimeters of travel. Of course, when you guide those housings, those, those cables through the frame, uh, you don't want them to be wrinkled, you don't want them to go not straight. Uh, try to put them as straight as possible and this, these two ports in this system allow me to uh, put some tension on the cables and the more tension I have between these two ports by the head tube and by the bottom bracket the less rattling they will be. You can also use some, um, uh, it's called a foam, foam protectors or foam pipes that you put around these uh, housings so that there is less uh, noise. This one isn't noisy at all. If you over tight this part, which is the seat post clamp, uh, you, you can not only damage the frame, but your seat post might either work slowly or it might not extend at all. And then you will be wondering about the settings of the seat post, but it actually will be the seat post clamp. I've noticed that especially with the Fox uh, transfer uh, dropper post. Now I'm putting just a little bit of uh, Brunox um, on this post, cleaning it, and it will be ready to go. 170 millimeters. I love it, guys, especially in the corners and when jumping. Please give me some thumbs up and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.